All right. Lessons in cycling once again. Hello. Thank you for watching this video in advance. And uh, this is the product of my research. And uh, it only brings out the, you know, the curiosity in me. Because as a new cyclist before, it's really hard for me to tell. Ano ba talagang gulong ang dapat ko piliin sa bisikleta ko? Uh, and if you're the kind of guy na curious then, and if you're starting your cycling journey, to know ano ba talagang dapat mo i-consider sa gulong. Um, kasi nakakalito eh, ang daming manufacturers there. Na they're saying that their tire is better when it comes to trail. Some are saying that they're the best for the road. And some are saying that they're actually the well-rounded type of uh, you know tires. And different manufacturers, they also different uh, offer different variations of tires. So, sa portfolio nila. So, parang analysis paralysis yung uh, nangyayari sa atin. But uh, the objective of this, uh, you know, edition or this blog is to really educate, spread awareness on how are, are we going to consider, uh, what are the things that we should consider when uh, selecting the tires for our bicycle. And uh, if you find this interesting, then I welcome uh, you to stay tuned. So... These are the areas that we will cover no, for this topic. I know the, the, the tire industry has a decade of uh, um, development. So I'm trying to compress it in a uh, smaller or in a very short period of time here. Uh, there are lots of things to cover, but uh, in order for us to preserve time, we will focus on three key areas. That's measurement, features, and conclusion. So, we will arrive at a certain conclusion later um, based on a target use case. No? So, Alright. So, let's start with measurement. So, yung measurement natin kasi, uh, there are different tires, so, uh, dif different tire sizes. sizes no? uh, especially, nung bata ako, I only know about BMX. And then, there came a road bike. So, I thought dalawa lang yung klase ng gulong. Magkakaiba lang yung kapal. When I say dalawa lang yung klase ng gulong, it's the diameter itself. So, obviously, what I see on the BMX is uh, about the size of the motorcycle then, no? Uh, back in the days. And uh, pag nakakita ko na medyo malaking gulong, uh, tawag ko doon is a racer road bike. So, para ngayon ma ma-prevent ma natin yung confusion especially for the newbies although it's very obvious naman that there are different sizes no? paano nga ba nagsimula yung measurement niya so there are two outstanding organizations that actually help the formulation or the standardization of uh, tire sizing that we know today uh, the first one, of course, yung pinakasikit dyan na kilalang kilala natin is the ETRTO or the U European Tire and Rim Technical Organization. But did you know that uh, it's not only the, I mean, there are only limited countries before that actually formed the ETRTO. And mainly these are basically the, the European countries, no? kaya nga European Tire Union. But later on, the United States and Japan also followed using the ISO 5775-1 and dash 2. So, the difference ng dash 1 and dash 2 is the dash 1 is concentrated or, or focused rather on the manufacturing of pneumatic tires. While si dash 2, yun naman yung sa rim. No? And then, until the end of 1960s in Europe, doon lang na-realize na yung various standards on bicycle, and, uh, I mean, very subjective and we cannot uh, do cross compatibility so nagkaroon ng association the european tire and rim technical organization was formed um and then they they agreed and disagreed at some point how to standardize it and we know for a fact na bukod pa nga yung issue ng english metrics or english and then metrics no kung ano yung susundin some are actually using course the, the, the traditional english system and then there came the the metric system and uh, everything is in, into chaos different manufacturers of bicycles back then are actually um, you know promoting their own measurement uh, and their their own research 
So until 1969 came in where the MC subcommittee agreed to revise the criteria on how to identify uniquely the tire size designation of uh, bicycle tires, specifically bicycle tires. And uh, what is the major dimension for proper tire identification uh, has been selected as the specified rim diameter. So medyo matatouch base natin ng konti yung rim no? uh, because that was the the, the Uh, the one consideration on the standardization. And also, of course, they also came about the nominal section width, assuming that the uh, bicycle tires had an approximate round shape. So, uh, and that will be measured in uh, millimeters. So, the new marking uh, metric, uh, what I'm trying to say is the new marking is now metric, which appeared as the ETRTO that we know today. And then, makamatanong nyo, then uh, if Japan and United States uh, followed uh, when? In the early 80s. Uh, Japan had an agreement to adopt the same principles of the ETRTO and publish the standards, the, which are the ISO 5775-1 and ISO 5775-2. So, for us to appreciate, ano ba talaga yung naging changes, no? Sa tire industry, especially the, the bicycle industry. And these are basically the pneumatic tires lang, no? Meaning, ito yung mga air pressured, mga binubambahan natin, so that it would uh, accumulate pressure. And uh, so, this is it. So, makikita nyo from the leftmost table, that's the old markings of the ETRTO, and then it was migrated later on on the ETRTO marking. So, kung meron pang ganyan kaluluma kayong gulong, then you would know what is the proper ETRTO marking nowadays. And uh, as we go along or move to the right, those are different measurements. No? And then, uh, I highlighted there the 650 by 42B. Uh, uh, ano ba yung size niyan? Particularly, meron kasing nagtanong sa akin, if a 650... Uh, tire daw ba is going to fit on the 26er. Sabi ko, I cannot know the answer back then. But uh, with this table, I can guarantee that uh, a 650B by 42B is going to fit into uh, a rim that is specified with the 44-584 marking. So it boils down on the ETRTO marking on the, the rim itself. No, as uh, Like I said. Oh, sorry, my bad. Ay, ah, yeah, yeah. It's 650B by 42. So, kasama pa siya dito. Medyo naduling ako. Akala ko kasama na siya sa 28 by 62B. And then, these the uh, uh, old markings as well were adapted into what we know as the 622. Uh, yung dash 622, yan yung diameter ng rim. And, uh, but still, 700C is still a popular term, especially in the European. So, this is the ETRTO. Now, let's compare it. Paano naman siya dinefine ni ISO? So, si ISO dinefined it into actually, uh, uh, I would say, 13 sections. No? Uh, yung number 1 dyan, ito, that's the thread. And then number 2, yung distance na yan, that's the section width of the tire itself. And then the number 3 is the maximum overall width. No? Kung makikita nyo yung measurement, it's from sidewall to sidewall, yung outer Uh, outer side wall ng tires no? followed by the four crown thickness so b- basically these numbers mean how are you going to um, put measurement on the tire but uh, in, in a nutshell this is a pneumatic tire of course it's going to inflate then therefore you have to define uh, uh, under the assumption that it is inflated ano ba talaga yung overall volume niya o ano ba yung overall measurement niya. So, therefore, uh, you know, engineers really like to be precise no, when they standardize it so that everybody will be able to follow the manufacturing of the, the tire and th- there comes a standardization so that magkakaroon ngayon ng cross-compatibility between brands. So, I will not discuss this further but as an FYI, the number 4 is the crown thickness. So, ganyan niya. Kung gano'ng kakapal yung the the contact point of the the rubber tire itself that hits the road. Kasama na yung tinatawag natin in layman's term, the spikes. No? Which is actually the crown. Then, 
Uh, yung number 6 dyan, that's actually the side wall thickness. Yung malapit sa rim. And then the maximum overall diameter, number 7, uh, that is from the tip of the crown all the way dun sa cross section niya pababa. So if you have an entire rim, I will show that uh, on the next slide. No? Makikita niya na ganun siya measure ngayon. So the tires are measured differently than the rims. Uh, and then yung number 8 naman, that is the specified rim diameter. So from here, remember from here, I said rim diameter, no? Kung makikita nyo kasi yung rim, di different designs din yan, no? Meron yang, uh, uh, meron yang minsan mas malalim pa to. But actually, kung makikita nyo saan ba sinusukat yung rim diameter, it is where the, the beads, the bead base, uh, which is number 9, has in contact with the rim. So, kahit ito, itong number 10 na yan, sinasabi nating rim is lumalim pa yan, but again, the measurement of the rim diameter starts from uh, the bead base. Bead base, yan, yan. So, kaya makikita nyo, specif uh, specified rim diameter is from this area down to dun sa cross-section ng rim, which is I will show later. So, and then number 11, that is just the measuring rim width. Of course, yan, hindi define din yan sa manufacturing so that we would know ano ba significance niyan, no? Of course, you will not get a tire na mas narrow, no? Mas narrow yung wall-to-wall -wall measurement doon sa actual uh, rim width. Of course, di ba? Hindi siya, hindi siya dapat ganun. So, as much as possible, the tire has to have a uh, you know, a, a wider than, it has to be wider than the rim, basically. And then, back in the days kasi, hindi pa uso yung mga folding tires. So, bicycle tires are manufactured by steel bead wires. Sometimes, nakikita ko pa rin may mga steel bead wires now. So, that's why it's, it was taken into consideration the thickness of this portion, which is, this is the number 12. And then, lastly, the 13, uh, number 13, that is the uh, engraving or decorative pattern. So, makikita nyo minsan sa mga tires natin, no? it's very obvious, meron yung parang naka-emboss dito sa side. Sometimes, it tells you the uh, yung rotation, the tire rotation, where it should be. And, uh, if it's omnidirectional, wala yun. But, definitely, ang markings dito is what's the ETRTO marking. Also, the English measurement, sometimes naka-indicate by it. Also, the maximum PSI <clears throat> or bars that uh, that you should inflate the tire with. So, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na size markings, no? Um, and this is taken into consideration the uh, ETRTO markings. So, kung mapapansin nyo, yung 700C that we know it, it's marked by 622mm. And this is actually the the rim itself, no? It's not the tire, it's the rim. Um, Ayan yung sinasabi ko kaninang cross-section ng diameter. So, para malaman nyo ngayon kung yun bang rim nyo is, uh, is a standard, then you have to measure it kung walang tatak yan if it's 622 from this point to this point. And uh, ganun din naman yung ibang lumang markings, uh, yung English system nga, no? um, sinasabi nila that they are also measuring it, um, the, the rim itself, but because of the lack of standardization before, they are measuring it from the outer going to inner. So, may, ngayon may makikita pa rin kayong ganyan measurements na ribs. And then the French actually adopted the metric system, yung 700C na sinasabi natin. So, they, they in principle, the English uh, measurement is very similar to French. It's out, outer to outer. No? And then the European uh, or the ETRTO nga standardizes it so that everybody is using the same language. No? So instead na outside yung i-measure mo, ang i-measure mo is yung inner. Diba? Kasi yung, yung inner, it matters yung circumference niya. Eh. Then, then when you say it's 622 marking, automatic. Na kahit pakapalin mo pa o palaparin mo, pahabain mo tong rim na to, then at least it's gonna be consistent on that aspect. And then, yun lang. Doon lang sila magkakatalo how, how thick the tire is. Uh, what not. Ngayon sa akin, in principle, 
medyo nahihirapan pa rin akong sundin to sa totoo lang because it's not what I, I got used to even the bicycle shops are using if it's if the rims are 28 inch in diameter or 700 no um it's it's very easy kasi for me to decide if the tire is going to fit because meron ako ng mga napansin na rims ngayon na nagbabago yung depth ng ng rim So yung yung kapal ng rim, I suppose na ganitong kapal yung sinasabi ko, I mean the, the deepness of the rims, sometimes medyo mas malubog yan. So kapag sinukat mo yun, hindi siya actually 622 mm. And kung ito kasi yung papagbasihan ko ngayon, medyo nagdududa ako if a 700 c tire would fit. So I still go with the outer outer. No? And if that is guaranteed a 700 mm outer to outer then I'm, I'm confident that that 700 c tires or a 29 uh, 29er tires going to fit um, at the end of the day yung 29er tires natin yung outer to outer rim diameter niya is 28 inch okay so tire sizing so, dito, dito siya papasok ngayon no? kung makikita niyo yung tire sizing kasi natin it is measured katulad ng pinakita natin kanina sa previous slide Uh, it is from the crown all the way to dun sa cross section of the opposite of the, the tire itself to the tip of the crown as well. So, kung yan, ito is dulo ng spike, then dulo din ito ng spike. That's how you measure actually the tire. So, in this example, they are referencing a 26-inch tire, no? Kung makikita natin, and uh, there are different tires because of the different designs. They have different uh, internal uh, uh, diameters, which is this is where we need to be very careful because uh, you, we are trying to mix and match parts sometimes without knowing if the tire um, inner diameter is really going to fit into the rim. And by rule of thumb lang naman yan, if the inner diameter of the tire is gonna be the same with the outer diameter of the rim, then it's a match. So, papasok siya. Alright? Uh, sometimes, medyo may beating ng konti. Uh, siguro, off by a slight few millimeters, but kung medyo pupwersahin natin yun, nag-fit pa rin siya. So, as long na hindi sobrang layo yung gap, I would say, uh, when we define hindi sobrang layo ng gap, if the difference is only plus or minus, Uh, 2 millimeters, then I think it's fine. Totally fine. So, sumobra man siya ng konti, ganon, then uh, I guarantee it's going to work based on this uh, information that we have. So, case in point, no, there's a new tire na nauuso ngayon sa gravel uh, bikes, the 650B. And then, sa mountain bikes, two years ago, I started learning uh, or knowing that there's a 27.5 tires. Um, and then, ang tanong is, can you cross uh, switch ba the tires between the 650B and the 27.5? Well, uh, until now, hindi ko siya masagot ng diretso. But based on these guidelines, then I am confident that I will be able to answer that. Just knowing the outer diameter of the uh, 27.5 and uh, knowing the inner diameter of the 650B. So, kung ang 650B mo, and this is being uh, a standard measurement nowadays, if it's 584mm, then I can guarantee that if the outer to outer diameter of the 27.5 ribs is the same, then it's going to fit. Now, plus minus uh, 2mm siya. Uh, Mag-fit yan. Although this, this example is just a 26H. But you get the principle out of this slide. It's very useful. And take note oh, sinabi nga nila approximate outer diameter so it's not a precise measurement so there's still a, a margin of error and uh, for us to be safe then it's uh, plus minus 2 mm so we can't really avoid uh, discussing the rim uh, like i said earlier that's why uh, we have uh, discussed the, the rim manufacturing uh, uh, earlier no uh, how what to consider in choosing that and uh, if that really helps then 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 we will proceed with features so ano ba naman yung features na hinahanap natin sa isang tires diba uh, when we select one so 
uh, we're not an expert so let's see what the others have to say um, a brief history of the tires is it actually started with the automotive industry no? and these are led by the society of automotive engineers they didn't actually mention the features but uh, actually what they have concentrated on are the factors that affects the grip and resistance of the tires so let's consult them since uh, these are associations of engineers they have invested a lot of effort although nag start siya with the automotive industry it's because you know automotive industry has been carrying lots of passengers no and uh maraming sasakripisyo ng buhay if, if because yung gulong is hindi maganda yung grip especially on different countries that have different seasons and like here in the Philippines you only have two seasons the wet and dry others experiences uh, four seasons especially during rainy or winter they they have snow so a lot of effort has been really put by the engineers to define what are the factors affecting the grip so without further ado we will move to the topic of grip resistance and mileage so alam naman natin na marami tayong kinoconsider diyan eh even even sa ano natin no sa daily route if if you're a long distance uh, cyclist gusto mo lagi yan parang naglalago na loop Luzon loop then you might be considering a tire for for road na uh, less yung resistance or what some some what some other call it uh, rolling resistance di ba you wanted manipis na gulong uh, para less contact sa ground and then it preserves your energy others are also considering mileage if it's a daily commute bike then ayo mo naman ng gulong na madaling mapudpod uh, while others they they ride even on rainy days they say that grip is more important to them so the question is can we have it all can we have it all we know naman that uh, rubber tires are essential part of the bicycle so without further ado himay-himayin natin tong tatlong uh, features na to or factors affecting the grip no? so let's start with the tire grip or traction uh, alam naman natin na tires basically uh, rubber yan component and we know the saying that when the rubber meets the road there's a uh, there's friction no? what what is the main thing ba that affects the grip or the traction of the tire um, i according to my research basically this is it so the more rolling speed you have so if you're kung bagat kung tumatakbo ka nang mabilis and this is basic physics even in high school we've studied this that there is even more friction on a stationary object compared to a moving object so if you are on on zero speed then friction is the highest but as you gain momentum or movement especially sa gulong nalelessen yung friction and then it will plateau at some point no? because of the uh, coefficient oh hindi tayo mag physics dito don't worry we will not deep dive into that but uh, in in layman's term i'll, I'll explain it as a uh, simple as i can um there are three key areas though that actually affects the the friction or the rolling resistance of the tires so these are the these are the three things the tread design the tire compound so yung tread design yun yung ikita natin yung mga spikes bakit magkakaiba yung itsura no no spikes ano ba siya aesthetic purposes lang ba siya uh, ano ba siya para meron does it really serve a purpose kasi napakanipis ng ibang gulong and then yung iba makikita natin walang tread sabi nila be, the, the grip is better pag walang tread dun sa mga road while the others say uh, for mountain bikers pagka trail yan dapat merong spike because you need grip so is, is that a myth um, let's find out and then yung tire compound different manufacturers would uh, are, are saying that they are better than the others no? um, but we will get into that and then also the tire construction how, how are they how are they made uh, diba? so we will find that out and then without further ado uh, let's go to the thread so kung makikita nyo yung tire kasi natin uh, the thread designs I will not deep dive into this we will just go uh, through it 
because this was a reference that I get from Continental Tires. And uh, basically, Continental Tires have been known to be a good manufacturer for automotive. You know? And uh, they brought that experience in manufacturing bicycle tires. So there's a merit on their design. So the, tre the tread designs that the, they have considered and uh, I think they're not the only ones who consider this. Other manufacturers consider this as well because of the formation of the Society of Automotive Engineers. No? So, number one, there's grooves. There's tread ribs. No? The grooves actually serves as a pathway for water to be displaced so that yung treads will have contact to the ground, greater contact to the ground. And then there are cross slats yeah, between. And the reason why you have that is it allows the thread ribs, believe it or not, hindi natin to napapansin, but those cross slats allows for dispersion of water as well as it allows these uh, thread ribs to have more contact on the ground by, of course, parang nagbibend sila eh pagka na ng pressure. And then there are also sipes. And akala natin design lang yan. But because of that design, actually, water gets displaced uh, as well. No? And it prevents yung tinatawag nating hydroplaning, yung pagdulas ng gulong pagkabasa yung kalsada. And then, all of these, pag kinumbine mo yung sipes na yan, those are called thread blocks. Just, just, uh, so, these are just the thread design pass packs. So, what else? There are three different designs of threads. There's symmetric, there's asymmetric, and then there's directional. So, ang, I think ang na-adapt dyan doon sa tire construction sa bike no, is the symmetric. So, when you say symmetric, ito yung hindi ka magkakamali on how you gonna attach the tire to the rib. Uh, while the directional, this could be the one that uh, will make you think twice before putting the tire back in because you have to look for the directional arrow. Alright? So, that's the that's the main difference between symmetric and directional. Now, what's the asymmetric? Uh, sabay kasi asymmetric design threads are I, I don't know. Maybe it's not applicable. Uh, it doesn't make sense or I haven't seen one. All, all design uh, uh, tire designs in the bike are symmetric. It's just that some some are omnidirectional and some are directional. Or I would say unidirectional is the correct term. Uh, so that, that's my, my thought on this based on my research. Um, I, I've used folding tires, mountain bike tires, gravel bike tires, uh, road bike tires. Uh, all of them are the same. They, they're all of the designs are symmetric. It's just that sometimes the, the tires that I get are directional. Like the one that I'm using right now, it's a Donnelly tire. It's a 32C attached to my gravel bike. It's a directional tire. But the Gravel King by Pana Racer, it's, uh, it's a symmetric and omnidirectional tire. Siya. Or not omnidirectional, but it's not unidirectional is uh, what I'm trying to say. Alright? So... Just a trivia, uh, this is just uh, for general awareness, no? but the most common tread pattern in use for passenger tires in the automotive industry is the symmetric tread, tread pattern. Although I've seen there, uh, seen, seen other resources wherein there's really a tire that's specific for snow um, during winter. Even on bicycles, they literally have uh, steel spikes. No? Uh, so just a trivia for for everyone's uh, general awareness uh, you know what's the what's the advantage maybe may nagtatanong sa inyo since nan tapag-usapan na rin natin yung automotive uh, tire industry you know, what's the advantage of having a symmetric thread uh, or maybe for for example an asymmetric thread uh, well the general rule of thumb is uh, these different uh, patterns disperse water in you know in different efficiency uh, the design basically is to intend the intention of the design is basically to enhance the performance such as water dispersal or, or uh, dry grip and snow traction no, for other countries but me uh, here 
for example, I, I've seen the uh, tires of our vehicle, then it's just symmetric. No? I don't really care that much because we have uh, only two seasons, the wet and dry, and plus because of the situation right now, uh, we rarely actually uh, use our, our vehicles. No? So in the bicycle run though, um, I, I think what we need to really consider is the route that we take where we usually bike because the rising the riding style it actually affects the the tire selection that we have uh, a perfect example yan is uh, an all season touring tire is something that you would want to consider if you're that kind of guy who likes bike packing uh, long rides during the day but mainly roads uh, and, and it's because you cannot predict the weather right so better you have uh, the best of both worlds the grip and also the mileage uh, and that's the all season touring tire okay so that's the the thread design pass we will move to the next topic or subtopic rather which is the tire compound and construction so paano ba kasi sila ginagawa i mean the automotive industry has been generous enough to leave this uh uh guides know how the tires are manufactured so there's basically three there's stage one stage two and stage three which is the curing so the rubber compounding kung makikita nyo sa automotive this is basically uh, brought to you by bridgestone i'm not promoting it here but i'm citing it as a reference so underneath the thread there is the belt system yeah yung makikita nyo yung mga steel belted tiles no? and then there's the tire casing itself and the bead and uh, the rubber compounding is being added to there so what's the impact of the, the rubber compound no? kung yung sa stage 1 nga pala yan the reason why I mentioned this uh, tire construction is it, there's a video eh, uh, that I saw and that, that that's something that you can also see from Bridgestone the stage 1 is where you are actually gathering the, the tire itself and uh, forming the the outer layer uh, the actually the belt system if i'm not mistaken then stage two you will bring it to another area where where you will integrate the tire casing and the uh, the actual thread uh the, the rubber itself you will integrate it and then stage three dyan na sila iiwan yung, yung curing process nga. so that you will bond these materials together they didn't disclose the the curing process but in essentially para siyang kumbaga sa pandesal is nilalagay mo siya sa pugon niluluto mo siya so in principle ganun din yung yung tires but we don't know what specific heat it is are they using steam uh, they they haven't disclosed that okay so all of the tires basically undergo through this process no and it's it's not uh it's not uh, a unique uh uh, thing to do for tires i mean regardless if it's automotive or bicycle tires they undergo the same uh, stages and the thread design they they all all of them undergo the same principle no but of course they're only the, the only differentiator of one manufacturer to another is to really understand the terrain and what kind of thread design or crown actually specific to the crown or spikes as we know it no, that is really applicable to the terrain and uh, if they gathered enough study then that's their differentiator and then the third thing that actually i, I think this is where all uh, manufacturers would uh, have an advantage no? because engineers or chemists have the ability to play around with the compounds of the tire construction so case in point ito si continental no I'm, I'm a fan of uh, gator skin they said it's puncture proof um, and it's it has good grip so I don't know how how true it is um, as a matter of fact I ordered a pair uh, right now from UK and uh, I, I also had my cousin used it uh, I don't know I, I have not tried it yet kasi hinihintay ko pong mapudpud yung uh, Donnelly tires ko no, before attaching them but basically, uh, Continental said that they have this formula. They, they call it the black chili. 
and in comparison with the traditional uh, compound or standard compound that they said. So, makikita nyo yung standard compound is color-coded naman yan. This one. Yun yung nasa, nasa pinakaloob. So, the speed, ibig sabihin, the, the lesser or the triangle is um, lower or farther rather from from this point. It means the, the, the lower score it, it helps or that the lower score it gets. So, meaning yung standard compound, hindi siya built for speed. Uh, ganun din yung mileage. So, mabilis siya mapudpod if it's a standard compound. But the grip is fair. And then they they developed the pure grip. No? I think uh, ito hindi ko pa nakita kung ano yung mga gulong nila na merong pure grip. Uh, but they said that according to this mileage is good. So medyo makuna dyan tayo na yan. Grip is good. But rolling resistance is high. As opposed to the black chili compound which is being used for gator skin. According to Continental, this is their... Uh, this is their affinity, no? So, it, compared to the three compounds, again, I'm pointing out, it's being compared to a compound. It's not being compared to uh, uh, another version of tire. Meaning, if they have gator skin, they also have other uh, tires, no? That's being marketed out there. So, being compared to a compound and they said that that is the effect that they were able to maintain the balance between the grip and speed remember yung yung ano natin kanina yung pinakita kong slide na where friction is high and the speed is uh, low diba of non-moving objects and it doesn't have anything to do with it but keep in mind that they said that uh, they are not compromising the traction of the tire or the grip itself uh, even if it's moving, it has good grip. Although hindi nila ma, hindi naman sila nag-release ng measurement kung kung ang perfect grip is 100%. Are they at 99% or 99.5? They didn't release that, but this is basically a visualization on the improvement of the black black chili compound. Although uh, the mileage is not as good as the pure grip compound, and of course we can't have it all. What you can do is to create an ideal uh, compound for, for a cyclist to consider using the tire instead. So, uh, what's the difference? Uh, uh, if, if Gator Skin has that, then I think it's better to ask also the other manufacturer. Case in point, based on my research, this is brought to you by Maxis, by the way. No? This is how they manufacture their, uh, their tires. Naman. So, if uh, Gator Skin has what they call the, you know, that black chili compound, they stay. Si Maxis naman has the triple compound. Uh, three compounds arranged in the tire for the ultimate in no compromise racing performance. But of course, we co this is like comparing uh, apples and uh, parang Washington apples yung isa. And then yung isa is Fuji apple. But of course, because... Kung makikita nyo dito, yung reference picture natin is an, uh, is an MTB tire. No? So, they, they call it the single compound naman, dual compound, and triple compound. So, this is, ito yung sinasabi ko na different manufacturers would have advantages over one another depending on how heavily they're investing in their research. So, si, si Continental nga lang has really paid for the trademark for that black chili uh, term they said but uh, Maxis wanted to keep it simple they, they call it single compound, dual compound triple compound uh, their engineers or chemists must have mixed uh, different ratios of uh, you know chemicals no, to arrive to this uh, term uh, whatever that means but uh, kung makikita nyo the tire construction is still pretty much uh, similar to what we've shown in the ISO so, they, they have the bead, the casing, the thread, the puncture protection, and the, also the sidewall. Well, Maxis like to keep it simple based on this reference. No? Um, and the technology that they have compared with PolyX Breaker is what they call silkworm. Okay. And uh, that's their own technology. Uh, we will not compare technology to technology, but what we wanted to, 
to learn here is really understanding that there are different patents involved or different technologies involved on the tire industry. And uh, at the end of the day, if it promises similar things, then uh, I, I don't know. It's up to us to decide which one. So besides the compound, then we discuss the resistance, which is the third uh, you know, features or well, characteristics that we disclosed earlier and uh, we will cover. Now, what are the factors affecting resistance of the tire? Uh, of course, nandiyan si inflation pressure, there's road surface, tire load, and temperature. So under certain conditions, let's say that the, the tires that we have, uh, case in point, si Continental using black chili compound, that they said that they have good grip and good uh, you know, speed and less mileage, then of course, it's still going to be affected by these four key factors. The inflation pressure, the road surface, tire load, and temperature. Why? Because... As we know, uh, <laughs> ito, medyo slight physics ulit, no? we know that uh, the source of force between the tire and the road is the weight. So the heavier your bike is, that's why everything you have to take into account. Eh? How heavy is your frame? How heavy you are? Do you have luggages that you're gonna, gonna be putting into the bike? Because, I mean, come on, if you're, you're I would say, 120 kilos, then I, I don't think you will feel the difference of having a, a 700C, 23C tires on your bike. I doubt that you will be able to feel that. Um, much better you get a good uh, rolling fat tire because it affects eh, it affects. And there's a science behind it. So kung, kung makikita nyo, kung maaalala nyo kanina yung sinasabi ko na rolling resistance no? uh, or the friction itself, um, ito kasi is a sample uh, representation of a wheel um, back in the days. So, the engineers have actually calculated the resistance. They, they call it the coefficient. No? So, yung letter R dyan kasi is the resistance force from the surface. And R na maliit is actually the wheel radius. You times that two, you get the diameter. And F that is the towing force applied to the axle or torque. So, pag pedal mo, kung gaano ka kalakas pumadyak, that is the force that you are actually transferring to the axle of the rear tire. And that is the torque. And of course, you have the weight that actually affects that. So, yun yung sinasabi ko kanina na if you are carrying an the entire weight that your that your bike is carrying is let's say 120 kilos i don't think that you will be able to feel much of the difference and remember these engineers have calculated this to arrive into a conclusion on what would be the ideal uh, weight force that you need to apply to move to move a stationary wheel um, back in the days wala pang rubber tire so the calculation that they uh, did is based on a steel or iron wheel na ginagamit sa, sa rails. So, ayan yung gulong ng tren, gulong ng mine cart. So, that's how they, they arrived to that. And the result of this con constant, meaning, yung sinasabi nating constant na yan, is the result of the applied friction to the uh, cast iron wheels on steel rails. That is the result. So it's a constant uh, resistance and they call it coefficient because it even if it's constant but it also being affected. Kumbaga meron ka lang multiplier eh. Kung constant siya, ang multiplier mo dyan is the width of the contact of the uh, surface of the the wheel itself. Of course, you can carry this point of discussion or it can be applied is what I'm trying to say for pneumatic tires on hard pavement. Take note, hard pavement. 
because doon mo lang makikita yung consistency ng road surface and how it actually reacts to the tire in contact. And it is reported that the effect of diameter on rolling resistance is negligible. Of course, within a practical range of diameters lang. When it comes to tires, I don't think, what I'm trying to say is we don't think that there would be a tire soon that would have, what, 40 inch diameter. I mean, that's a, that's an outlier. But if we are using a 29er tire, di ba? Um, or if we are using a 700C tires, then the effect of the, the diameter on the rolling resistance is negligible. What really matters mean, and this is what this slide is uh, referring to, no? is actually the force that you have to overcome in order to move your tire. That's why yung mga performance cyclists, makikita nyo, especially the ones competing, the World Series, hanggat maaari is mapagaan nila yung bike nila. It's because for every weight that your bike gains, naturally, there's a greater force downward. And if you remember this earlier, then it only means that you have to apply a greater force in order to, to, to overcome the resistance that is in contact with this uh, tire and the pavement. Right? So there's an opposing force behind, opposing force in the front. And all of those has to be overcome by the force that you have exerted on the uh, the pedals, which is transferred back to your drive drive train and to the axle to the rear axle. No. So, with that being said, under certain conditions, then there is really a merit that a thinner tire is going to resist less. Kaya ako sinasabing under certain conditions, no? is because if everything is the same, the tire pressure is the same, the weight is the same, um, the force applied to that, kung hindi magbabago yung, yung tire, yung tire volume, no? while you're riding on it, if it's rigid, then it lessens the the resistance of the friction if your tire is thinner. Ang mapapansin nyo lang yan is, ako kasi I've been a mountain biker before and I've been using a 29er tire. If I inflate it at 50 PSI, the 29er tire, I, I couldn't really feel the difference riding my mountain bike versus riding my gravel bike, which is a 32C tire no inflated at 50 or 60 psi so 60 psi gamit ko dun sa gravel bike and then yung 2.1 29er tire ko i inflated at 50 psi i couldn't tell the difference in the rolling i've even installed bicycle computers on both of them i'm riding the same terrain every day Going to work and going home, my top speed limit and average, regardless of the, oh, I mean, na, na test ko na siya na walang traffic, no, both. Hin, hindi ko talaga ma feel yung, yung immediate gain having a thinner tire. And that's what I'm trying to say that if the tire is going to be rigid, given the other conditions are constant then it, it doesn't really have a great effect on the rolling resistance. I've been cycling, uh, going to work, and of course, that's my service back and forth for almost five years before the pandemic happened. And I've installed bicycle computers on both just to check whether I'll perform better on the gravel bike or road bike um, using the same teeth configuration. I even installed the same chain ring, iba, uh, for them. Uh, sorry, lamang pala ng six uh, chain ring 
ng 660 pala yung chain ring ko sa gravel bike as opposed to sa mountain bike ko but that is compensated kasi the outer diameter of my mountain bike is greater than the gravel bike so it's it's being compensated but I was able to maintain the same average weight and I couldn't really feel the difference between them so without further ado that's uh, it for the tire load and road surface no and the the impact of that now what about the temperature the temperature has also an impact um and it, it's very easy to to articulate this i mean be me being as a child malapit kami sa tabing dagat uh, almost every day nagyaya yung mga pinsan ko na uh, maligo sa dagat and we we usually go to the beach at around 3 p.m. No. And meron kaming ganito, tawag namin salbabida, but basically this is a big uh, tire interior, no. Galing yan sa track. Of course, we will inflate it. Um around 2 p.m. we will inflate it uh, so that it would have enough air. And then it's it inflated well that uh, it will carry us. And then and then when we go to the beach, of course, ibabato na namin yan sa tubig bigla yung lalampot. And it's because the the air that we have pumped into it is actually hotter or warmer. So, we know naman that the warmer the air is, uh, the more it expands. So, warm air expands. Diba? So, af- affecting the temperature. So, ganun din yun. And that's why other people, when they when we do long rides, especially me, no, I, I tend to reduce the tire pressure uh, for example, ang recommended lang doon sa sa tire ko is maximum 60 psi. So I would only pump it at around 50 psi because I know that especially nung naglago na loop kami ng pinsan ko, tatamaan kami nung matinding sikat ng araw that time and it's gonna expand my tire. And that will also help you prevent yung bigla na lang pagburst ng gulong, di ba? Because of overpressure. So, as you gain momentum, actually, habang pumapadyak nga yan, habang nagro-roll yan, uh, it already builds heat. So, it, it, it expands continuously. And, of course, the temperature is being affected by the air temperature itself, the pavement, and the tire temperature as well. All of these combined will greatly affect the tire pressure that you have. Therefore, it's going to affect the rigidity of your tire. So, I guess, na-cover natin yung mga yan, no? So, it's about time to arrive into a conclusion. So, and like uh, as any scientific approach, we've gathered the data, we've gathered, uh, you know, things to consider. Uh, of course, when we select tires, then this is the profile on how we're gonna select. If the budget is of little cons, uh, little, little, constraint, wala tayong problema sa budget, then we have to consider the terrain, our riding profile, the load that we will carry, and the road condition and season, assuming that you are only a single bike user. But alam naman natin, yung mga kapadyak, iba sa atin, merong more than one bike. So again, if your bike is just one, it's very easy to decide which terrain, riding profile, load, road condition, and season that you're wearing. So for B, uh, palapit na yung uh, uh, rainy season, but I'm planning to do long rides, probably if pandemic is already over and wala nang lockdowns. No? I've been scouting some tires. I thought gator skin na yung gusto kong gamitin, but... Uh, when I saw this, the the Speed King, uh, my Continental, I, I got uh, I got curious about it, and it says that uh, the Continental Speed King CX uh, is a folding tire. If if you're doing slight off road and more off roads, it's not gonna compromise the grip and the mileage. And for me, that is what I want. That's my riding style. So, I think I'm gonna go for this tire. 
This is a 32C variant you know, that I'm looking at. So they, they call it the cyclocross tire. Uh, it features fast, uh, scaly central thread design, which is mababa lang yung rolling resistance while adding to its puncture protection as well, similar to gator skin. Uh, it comes with a phenomenal, what they said, black chili compound. That's why it meets the grip and the speed. Mileage is also good you know, for me. I, I can go off with that. So st stability and speed is okay. And uh, it's light. Only 290 grams per tire. So And it's folding. So you don't have to worry about tire. So for me, that is my use case. And I hope that uh, this lessons in cycling um, has been really of great help to you guys. So if you like this video, I know it's very long, but we, we were able to cover lots of topics. If you liked it, uh, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. Uh, we'll do more of this. Or if you find this, uh, what, whatever comment you have, I'll, I'll take uh, constructive uh, criticism. I'm, I'm okay with that so that it will also help me improve my content. So again, take away, I'm not, I'm not promoting it, but when you are choosing a tire, then look for those. It's very easy to use kasi the guide that the Continental gave. No, yung, yung speed, okay, and then yung grip, and also the mileage. So always take, into that, uh, take that into consideration. And I hope that works for you. It works for me. And again, Thank you once again for tuning in. This is Lessons in Cycling. Mabuhay po kayo.